What's better, Apple Magnetic Mask or Motion VFX MRoto AI? You may have seen my review of Motion VFX MRoto AI Tracked Masks plugin, and generally speaking, I have continued to use it ever since, and I still love it. In that video, I stressed the need to have that kind of third-party plugin for tracking uh, duties because Apple didn't really offer anything that came close. But times have changed, Apple have been busy, and now I find myself asking, which is better? Do you still need to pay the monthly fee that you have to with Motion VFX? Or can you get by with Apple's stock tracked mask plugins? I wanted to know because I'm all for using the right tool for the job, but also I kind of like saving cash too. As I always do, I have put timestamps in, so you'd skip around all you want. Likes are greatly appreciated. Subs, I am honored. Elevate yourself to legendary status in my eyes and um, share this video. That just, um, that really means the world to me. This channel also has a Patreon if you'd like to support it any further. Any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel and then buy gear and give it away to my backers if that appeals. Uh, links below. Okay, let's dive in and get comparing. I've got two clips today. This guy from a music video that I filmed and then this clip from my review of the Samyang VAF lens kit. And I want to do two tests for these plugins. A simple background removal for this guy and then really push them hard by trying something they'll likely struggle with, a sky replacement for this clip. So starting with Motion VFX um, Roto AI, and I'm gonna pause the clip where I can see all of our subjects, including his hands just there. A good tip at this point is to always mask your subject rather than trying to select the background and mask that out. This way it gives your software a, a clue as to what to prioritize when masking. So let's do exactly that. And MRoto AI has this cool kind of magic wand tool. So you just roughly draw around the subject and it's done. You can see it's done a fairly good job. I mean, hair is notorious notoriously difficult for this kind of software to accurately detect. And with this one, I have to track forwards and backwards because I'm starting in the middle of a clip. It does this at not a blisteringly fast pace, but not too bad. And I can definitely see some inconsistencies with it detecting the hair in this case. One really nice thing that MRoto has that Magic Mask doesn't have is being able to dial in the edges of the mask. You can do it with a lot more finesse, I think. You can see it has smoothness, shrink slash expand, and then blur. For cases like this, I actually like to add a little bit of blur and then actually shrink the mask a little bit and that to me looks the most natural. And there we have it, this is far from perfect and you know what, let's put him in a completely inappropriate background, let's put him in a boring looking office, shall we? And there we have it, whoo wee! And the mask really isn't that great, you can see, again, it's his hair that it struggled with and kind of understandably so, it's not as if we're using any kind of green screen here. Anyway, next up we have Magic Mask and this has the kind of dropper effect tool and this has detected our subject shockingly well and shockingly fast. It just takes a little bit of finessing, adding plus and minus points around so it knows what is our subject and what's the background and boom. I love with this one that you can just hit analyze and it will do the tracking forward and backwards for you. You don't need to do it yourself. And I will say it was faster by a, a good margin. Looking at the mask itself, yes, we don't have those tools to finesse the edges except for the feather tool, but it has done a better job, I think, overall in this case. In context and with our fantastic office background, I actually think these two would be pretty hard to tell apart. They both struggled at the same moments throughout the clip. Moving on. Next onto our sky removal, and I should say that these plugins are not ideal for this task, but that is intentional. I want them to struggle. And struggle they will. Back with MRoto now, and of course I'm just gonna select all that I can with the magic wand tool. And of course, I'm sure many of you have spotted what it's gonna struggle with here. It's the light that's shining through the trees. These are masks and that is just far too complex for these to handle. And there we go, and a little bit of refinement doesn't really do much, but you know, it's worth a try. And then we come to the tracking. And I have to say, it's commendable that MRoto is able to realize what it is I'm trying to track, but of course it's not doing anywhere near enough of a good job. And then here's a very cheesy looking oversaturated sky to drop underneath it and you've got something that looks terrible. 
but wait till you see what Magic Mask does. And setting up our mask now again, it's um, it's probably easier, probably quicker. Again, you need to finesse as much as possible. Magic Mask likes lots of points to reference. So I've put them all over the place and you can go into far more detail than this. And then I hit track and I was kind of amazed by what it was doing. It looked very good until I hit done. Drop in our cheesy background hit play, you can see everything's kind of ghostly. A lot of the tree line is now translucent and you can actually combat this by increasing the feather, so having less of a feather, and that looks like this kind of gives everything a weird halo. I mentioned that these tools are not the best tools for this job, and really what we should be using is something like a Luma Kia, where we can select a luminance range and then key it out. And here you can see I've done it to this clip and it has affected our subject as well. So to combat that, I've added another layer. It's just a mask of our subject, so she looks normal. I've added just a touch more blur to the background just to kind of blend everything a little bit. And the other thing that is gonna sell it a little bit more, of course, is to animate and keyframe the background to move with the camera. And it's still not believable, but it is far, far closer than any of these other mask plugins can manage. Now moving on to the pros and cons for each to see how they stack up. So starting with the pros of MRoto AI, and generally I find the tracking side of things to be fairly accurate. I do also find it a very versatile plugin. It's something that I've actually used countless times already, even though I've not had it for a long time. I also find the user experience to be really pretty great. It's nice and slick with good mask shaping parameters like feather, smooth, shrink, expand mask, and magnetic mask pros. It's free with Final Cut. Pro. The masking and rendering is really fast, much faster than MRoto. You can use multiple layers within a single instance of this plugin, which is something that MRoto can't do. You're going to get free updates, obviously, and the performance will only improve over time. And then the cons, and starting with MRoto, and of course, the big one, this is a paid monthly subscription. So definitely something to consider if you can see this saving you time, then it could be worth it. The results can be mixed depending on what you're doing. This kind of plugin struggles with motion blur and that kind of thing, and it's evident here. It's slightly slower to render, I would say, compared to Apple's versions, but nothing crippling. In saying that, I have had it once or twice where I've had to actually leave my computer because, you know, if it's rendering, you can't really do anything else at the same time. If you want to use multiple layers, that requires duplicating clips, and that's inevitably going to require more processing power. Again, it's nothing crippling, but just something to be aware of. And then the cons of Magnetic Mask and again mixed results. I, I do talk about this in just a minute to explain. I would say subjectively I found the UI less enjoyable and less flexible. So there you have it. I do wonder at this point whether as you get track masks included in almost every other editing software, Motion VFX should consider offering MRoto AI as a standalone plugin that you can buy outright. And for people who have been paying the monthly subscription, well, I feel like they have already paid for it, so free for them, right? I think the truth is that you can probably, probably get by with the stock version of this, even though I find myself reaching for MRoto more than I do Magnetic Mask. I still think to get the very best out of this style of editing, where you're masking and doing some clever things, I really think you need to be thinking about that side of it from the point of filming, rather than trying to fix something in editing. And that's just because, you know, these plugins don't particularly like things like motion blur. Um, they definitely prefer uh, lots of contrast and differing colors. So um, this is yeah, all things that you need to consider when using these kind of plugins. Anyway, there we go, lots of food for thought. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My questions of the day are, what are your thoughts on the differences of Magnetic Mask and MRoto? Which do you use? Is there a different bit of software that you prefer? Do let me know. I read your comments, so I really actually, I'm interested. Please let me know. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio, of which Google's algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent video. Uh, until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a video. See you guys.